Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash pro revenge. In today's episode. You want me to follow the rules, okay, I'll follow M. Come in for my shift? You just suspended me. MC for someone who is generally compliant. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. You want me to follow the rules, okay, I'll follow M. Worked in a prison years ago as a correctional officer. Our shift supervisors were sergeants. 4 to 12 p.m. shift was one of the busiest as we had the most activities going on during that time. Evening church service, gymnasium time, library, visitation, attorney visits, medication and sick calls, etc. etc. Meal time was always one of those times where thing had to be done quickly and without delay as it would gum up the works for everything else. Sergeants wanted it done like clockwork and without a hitch. They were also big on inmates are given a rule book and are expected to abide by it, you as an officer should know this book inside and out, forwards and backwards, and should make sure that inmates are following it. We actually got yelled at and written up when inmates didn't follow the rules, go figure, and the only saving grace was if we gave written warning to the inmates. Can't blame the officer for the inmate not following the rules if the officer wrote it down that he told the inmate to not do something, and they didn't basically. One of the biggest issues was inmates not coming out of their cells to get their food trays on time. Half the block at a time would come out get a tray and go back in their cells, lock up and the other half would come out and get their trays and eat at the tables. This switched back and forth based on shift and days. Now as the officers we were expected to give three verbal call for chow over the PA system for the block. First was something like 20 minutes prior to start, second like 10 minutes prior, and last was like 5 minutes prior so the officer had time to go around and secure all the cell doors closed, they could be opened automatically, but had to be manually closed to lock. After getting my rear end chewed for chow starting late by the supervisors because I had to stop at every other inmate's cell and wait for them to finish brushing their hair, put on their shoes, step out of the cell, and make sure the door was locked, for the umpteenth time I said screw it. You want to ride my ass about this fine, we gonna do it by the book. So I pulled out the almighty inmate rule book, and found the section about feeding times, schedules and procedures. It stated, and I'm vague on the exact working as it's been ages ago, but I remember the gist of it. If an inmate refuses to exit their cell after being given the third call for chow notice by the officer of the block, the officer is to secure the cell door and not provide the inmate with a tray. Basically we as officers weren't to go get a tray and take it to the inmate's cell as we weren't their butlers. Now granted we knew which cell doors were problematic and we could work around that, as sometimes an inmate would still be in their cell standing by the door waiting on us, and we could call the cot roll room and say open cell such and such again, then yank on it when we heard the motor operating in order to make sure the inmate was getting out to eat. No problem not their fault not ours, put in the notice to maintenance to fix it and move on. However with the oh I'm here at the Holiday Inn and I'm going to make your life miserable because I can crowd. If they didn't get out of their cells on time because they wanted to drag their feet, I would go by, slide the door closed, they automatically locked, and keep going to check the next cell. Yes, you guessed it, immediate you are denying me my food and I want a supervisor and I'm going to gut you like a fish you dirty. You'd hear it all. I only explained the procedure about three or four times and word spread within the prison. Officers never worked the same block for more than a week or two before rotating. I had inmates refuse to lock up demanding to see a supervisor until inmate so and so got his tray delivered to his cell because he wanted to lay on his bunk and read a book. Naturally this delayed feeding the entire block as we still had half the block waiting. I'd get a call from a supervisor who was sitting in the control room watching and wanting to know why I wasn't getting chow done on time. I told them to come on over and I'd explain it as the inmates weren't listening to my instructions anyways. Supervisor comes over and starts to ream me in front of the inmates, I pull out a copy of the rule book, already open to the section in feeding times, policies and procedures and read verbatim that once three calls for chow were giving if an inmate. Then I'd show the supervisor the time sheets we kept, where we made entries of all the events that happened, inmate so, and so left block to go to library at 1620 hours, inmate returned from medical at 1625 hours, etc. First call for chow given at 1,700 hours, second call at 1710 and third call at 1,715 hours. Supervisor looked at me, looked at the rule book looked back at me, started to tell me to get a tray and take it to them, 
I said sure just as soon as we go talk to my union representative and the warden about rewriting the rule book to accommodate the inmates' desires on any given day and time. This all happened a grand total of maybe two times before the supervisors caught on that they no longer had to say follow the rule book and make sure to abide by it or you will. They knew I was doing things by the book and they never said another word to me about it. They also never told me to go get the inmate a tray and take it to them ever again. Come in for my shift? You just suspended me. This happened about three years ago while I worked at a large pizza chain as a manager. Background, at the time of this story, I was in college coming up on five years of service at this company and four years of it being management. At our location I was the second longest standing employee with one other manager having one more year than me, so it goes to say that we knew how to run the store smoothly and handle shift changeover and scheduling. The old general manager left a lot of this work to us and only stepped in when things didn't add up cash-wise due to someone miscounting our general manager, my boss, was relocated due moving so we gained a new manager from outside our area and different corporate office. Cast, me as me, the general manager and manager in training. It's the middle of a dinner rush on Wednesday, and I'm running the line where we make the pizzas. Everyone is moving among and things are going smooth. Then I hear our new general manager from across the floor talking to our manager in training. General manager, sure honey if you want to leave early that shouldn't be a problem. Only problem is it very much is a problem she is one of two closers for the night, and I like going home before 2am on a school night, I have a 7.35 morning class so no sleeping in, so I walked over. Me, hey sorry to overhear, but did you just say manager I'm training can leave early tonight? General manager, yes, is there a problem? Me, manager in training is scheduled to be a closer tonight with me to be trained on paperwork and help clean. Did you ask anyone else to take their pace? General manager, no, but that shouldn't be a problem it's only wed, and you can manage it just leave when you're scheduled to and I can handle what's left in the morning. Me, okay boss if you say so. QMC. So the night is ending and me and my one closer are scrambling to get things done. I got the paperwork and daily cash put together and inventory while he cleaned. Right at the stroke of midnight I looked at him and said boss said it's time to go new general manager said to leave when scheduled they will handle the rest tomorrow. Needless to say things were not finished. Dishes were piled in the sink, floors weren't fully swept and mopped, and stations were not set up. Come tomorrow morning I get a phone call from the general manager screaming at me asking why the store was a mess and that the moment I can I need to come to the store and see him. Well classes ended and I came into work, on my day off might I add, to see the general manager and manager in training staring me down. Me, what seems to be the problem? Manager in training, you left this store a mess. And you call yourself a manager. General manager, she's right this is unacceptable. Me, I just did as you told me and left at my scheduled time. At this comment the general manager blew up and screamed some slew about how manager in training can replace me in a heartbeat and that I should have stayed and finished my job. He then proceeded to tell me I'm suspended from work for two weeks and to that I happily said okay. And walked out as I'm now suspended and not supposed to be at work. Fast forward to Friday night, I normally close Friday and Saturdays and I get a phone call from manager in training asking where I am. I humbly reminded her I'm suspended and to enjoy covering it alone. Not even 5 minutes later the general manager called me demanding I come work my shift and how he can't believe I'm skipping out. Again I humbly reminded him that I'm suspended on his orders. At this he stammered for a second then just told me to come in anyway as they have none to cover my shifts. I refused and said I will see him in 2 weeks. I turned in my notice and was never scheduled a shift even when I came back. I come to find our the general manager ended up covering all my shifts working upwards of 18 to 20 hours a day as the other manager that normally worked with me was on vacation. It's so nice to watch people stew in the mess they made. MC for someone who is generally compliant. I am a pretty compliant person by nature. Generally, I think acting out of spite brings adverse actions. However, even I have a story that might fit here. Many years ago. I was working a factory job in a print company while an undergrad. It was your typical 3 shift slash 24 hour operation and was open Monday through Friday for operations. Weekends it was open but mostly for maintenance to work on machines. 
I worked in shipping, second shift 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. My job was to take the printed good that had been stacked on pallets by the machine operators and print labels for the shipping weights, destinations, etc., wrap the pallets in plastic wrap, and forklift them into the warehouse until ready to load on a truck. About a month after being hired into the job, the first shift guy was moved to another part of the plant. There wasn't a third shift. That just left me, prepping every pallet for shipment all by my lonesome. It was fine though. The plant manager met with me to tell me I could work any shift I wanted. All the overtime I wanted, 1.5x dollar, until someone else was hired in to help. So I did. I was racking up the hours. Great money at 19 years old. This went on for the entirety of my time there. The first shift supervisor, SS, was kind of a dick but generally left me alone because I worked a ton. He would often come on Friday afternoons and tell me a particular truck would be there early Monday morning and if the shipment wasn't ready to come in on Saturday to get it done. Again, I was generally compliant. After all, Saturdays was a good opportunity to get caught up since the machines were down for maintenance and in an 8-10 to 10 hour Saturday shift I could have the shipping staging area completely cleaned from the week. Fast forward a few months. Still, they hadn't hired anyone else to help out on another shift. As usual, the SS came on a Friday afternoon to tell me about a truck that needed to go out early Monday morning. Only this time I had plans, my dad's birthday and a family dinner. I politely told him, I wouldn't be able to work the next day for said reason. His answer, you're scheduled to work then. If you don't come in, I'll write you up. Keep in mind, I had never turned down overtime before. Never told them I couldn't come in on a Saturday. I pointed all that out to the SS. His response, if you don't like it, McDonald's is right down the street. I calmly told him you're right. They might be hiring people like you, and I went back to my area. That's not the MC though. He came up a few minutes later and told me he didn't care how long I worked on Saturday, but that I needed to come in. So I did. I showed up, clocked in, I did do a little work so they couldn't watch the camera and tell me I was abusing my time on the clock, including part of the shipment needed. Then I left, exactly one full hour later. The truck was there waiting on me when I got there at 7am on Monday to start the shift. It waited while I finished that shipment, I knocked it out quick so not to put the truck driver in a bind and off he went. He wasn't upset about waiting a few minutes. The SS never said anything else about it, but he was there as I finished it Monday morning and was obviously frustrated. I started looking for another job that week. I found one after a bit. The plant manager wanted an exit interview, and I told him exactly what had prompted me to look for another job, the SS. He apologized for him. I'm certain nothing was ever done about it though. The plant manager position had seen a lot of turnover, and that SS had been there forever, keeping the business afloat basically. They weren't going to do anything about him running off a low-level college kid like me even if I did have a ton of work ethic and energy. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.